Shabbat Shalom. I would like to uh, read uh, from Second King. Uh, basically, yeah, Second King, uh, chapter five. And I would like to uh, talk about Naaman. He was a Syrian commander, and from uh, the book we know that he was great in honorable man in the eyes of his master. He did a lot of exploits, and he was a mighty man of valor, meaning he was rich, he was prosperous, but he has one problem, he was a leper. And uh, leprosy in the Bible, a lot of time uh, mention it, it's type of sin, as a type of sin. And it's true about us uh, as a believers, that we were Naaman's. We were Abraham's, who didn't know the Lord, who worshiped the idols. It can be different idols of money, it can be idols of materialism, idols of worshiping our children, our parents, work, you just name it. But the point is that Naaman knew that some, he has a problem. And one day, it's really probably a story not as about as Naaman, as a story of this little unknown hero, this little Jewish girl who told his wife. She was a, uh, this girl was in uh, captivity. She was a uh, slave girl. She was capt, uh, capt, uh, a captive young girl from land of Israel. And she told Naaman's wife, if my master would just go to Samaria, there is a prophet there who can help him to heal him from his leprosy. And he, Naaman went with a letter from his king of Syria, and he arrived in Israel. He arrived with this letter with a lot, a lot of wealth which he brought to the king of Israel, and uh, with a lot of pomp. And he handed that letter to the king of Israel. And when uh, Jehoram, and when King of Israel opened this letter, he ran to this closet because he said, am I God? Am I God to kill or make a life? That he, this man sends uh, me to heal his commander from the leprosy? And we can just imagine the sin. And Elisha, Elisha heard that. Elisha, we are just to remind uh, the people who did know, he, the one who was uh, inherited a an, uh, mantle from Elijah, and it was a double anointing. His ministry was really private ministry, more private, not as public as Elijah's ministry. And he was more introvert. And Elisha heard that. It, uh, it's tremendous just to think that in this wicked nation, Israel, which uh, it became a wicked nation because it's turned away from God, it was still a prophet and still men of God who was trying and praying for the nation and for his king. And he said uh, to the king, he said, why did you turn your clothes? Send him to me. And he will know that there is still a prophet in Israel. And the Naaman went to see him with his horses, chariots, and he stood at the door of Elijah, and he was hoping that prophet will come out, he will call on his God, and he will be miraculously, uh, miraculously healed. But a prophet not, didn't even come out. He just sent his servant, and he said, I tell Naaman to go to Jordan, this, and dip himself seven times. And he was dealing with this uh, goyim. He was dealing with this Gentile. The way God deals with all of us, we have to humble ourselves and obey. We have to humble ourselves and obey. And we can imagine uh, why the name and become enraged. He said, "Am I have to go in deep in those uh, muddy waters of Jordan? And they're really muddy." <laughs> They're not really as beautiful rivers as the rivers in Damascus. 
Am I, uh, rivers in Damascus, are they not better, uh, the river Abana and uh, Farpar, are not rivers better and, uh, than this uh, muddy river in Israel? But then his servants came to him and said, Master, Master, if prophet would tell you something great, wouldn't you do it? So even less than he is just telling you, go and dip yourself in this, uh, this river of Jordan. And he had the ear, and he, I believe the, the best thing that Naaman, he would like to get of this leprosy. He would like to get of uh, and as for us as a believer, it's true for us. If we really came to the end of ourselves, we would like get to the, if we got to the end of ourselves, we would like to get our sin. God will meet us there. And he went and he dipped himself once. We can imagine only. Use your imagination. When he came out and nothing happened. For first, second, second time, third time, and he's looking at himself, nothing happening. And he just continued in obedience, dip himself. And on seventh time, he came, and his skin disease, whatever he had, was gone. And his skin was the skin of the baby. And he came to the man of God, and he stood in front of him and said, and this is where I would like to read. Really, indeed, I know now that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take the gift from your servant. But he said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing, nothing. And he urged him to take, but he refused. And then Naaman said, let your servant be given two moles of loads of earth. Back then, people believed that on the land, particular land, you can only worship that God. So he asked for that uh, uh, earth to be taken with him. And he asked that God, uh, the Lord, I don't know, in whom he started to believe, would not uh, be angry at him when he will accompany his uh, king into the uh, temple to worship so-called God, whom he knew now, not God at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, we see, uh, this is a principle which we as a believers have to understand what's happening here. But now, the Elisha didn't want to deal, uh, take anything, because he would like to, Naaman to give all uh, glory to only true living God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he had a servant. His name is Hegazi. And he felt that um, his master didn't do the right thing, not taking anything from Naaman. He secretly went and followed the Naaman. And he ask him, and uh, Naaman greatly give him 150, like, it's, I believe, equal to 150 pounds of silver and uh, clothes and so on, etc. And he quietly came to Elisha, and Elisha knew, being the prophet of God, what was happening. And he said to him, where did you, do you go? And he said, I didn't go anywhere. Then his, uh, Elisha told him, did not my heart go with you? When man turned back from his chariot to meet you, it, is it a time to receive money and to receive clothing, allegroves and, and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female uh, servants, and therefore the lep uh, leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. Mm. Forever. This is a warning for us as a yes. servant of God. Because he brought a shame on the ministry of Elisha. He brought a shame on the uh, name of God, of Israel. And he was punished for his greed. And this is a warning for us as a believer. Amen. But uh, as a Naaman, as a Abraham, we come, it can come to true God only through faith, by grace. Yeah. 
And the grace of God and mercy of God was shown to this uh, Goem, to this Gentile king, and he was healed. And the same is true about me. It was true about every believer. We come in, nothing we can give to the God except our sins. But we can receive through the blood of Yeshua Amen. and through the mercy and grace, the healing for our soul and peace, and peace which passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. And this way is still open, as Yeshua said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And I'm begging you to call on his name today. And as a poor man cried out to the God and God heard him, he will hear you as well today.